So we've talked, uh, we've mentioned, we've talked about enzalutamide. So, so let's drill down on that a little bit. So we know that, again, enzalutamide as we sit here today is approved in patients in CRPCM1 disease who have been tried, exposed, or have refused docetaxel chemotherapy. Currently it is not, and, and that was basically on the AFFIRM trial. So we know that the prevailed data has been, has been presented. Uh, Mike, so a lot of people, a lot of the urologists look at this. I mean, it's, it's got a new name. It's, a, and it's an androgen receptor signaling inhibitor. I think most of us go, okay, it's another antiandrogen, right? So for, for our audience, why is this drug different from the other so, androgen receptors? Unlike bicalutamide, which everyone is very familiar with, but just really focused on the androgen receptor itself, and over time could actually, <laughs> instead of blocking the androgen receptor, it could actually stimulate the androgen because it loses its lag and ab binding ability. Uh, enzalutamide, or Xtandi, uh, actually binds the androgen receptor at a much greater affinity. It blocks the translocation of the androgen receptor androgen complex down into the nucleus, and it further blocks DNA uh, pro, uh, uh, transcription of this as well. So it's, uh, you know, everyone, no one likes to say it's a super Casadex type thing, but I think for the general audience, this is, it's a much more uh, a potent inhibitor of androgen uh, synthesis, or actual androgen blockade, one would say. Um, and so based on that, it has a lot of significant values that may have not ever been seen before in regard to Casadex that everyone is so familiar with. And there's, you know, and, and again, I think you're, again, what I see in my practice, I, I see a tremendous number of charts that come from my partners, and it, it's amazing to me the use of bicalutamide and all, and they love playing with the PSA kinetics. They just, ah, oh, the patient must be doing well. They don't really understand that at some point, again, bicalutamide does become a receptor agonist. They don't understand the fact that the use of bicalutamide, although yes, we see the PSA withdrawal effect, uh, it doesn't impart a survival advantage. Uh, we, to me, what was really, I think, very uh, interesting about Affirm is that a significant number of those patients, I think it was like, what was it, 80% had already been exposed to prior bicalutamide, and, and it still had a survival advantage. So I think, um, again, we, you know, we know that the PREVAIL trial, um, basically they, they've, they've submitted that data to the FDA. We know that they're going to try to get approval. So here's always the question. Here's the question that continues to come up. So we have two very distinct hormonal agents. We got it on the synthesis side, and we got them on the receptor side. Oliver, in, in your, because I know you've got a ton of these patients, you've used both drugs, is there any data out there that can address that concept of sequencing one versus the other, one before each other? Do you know of anything that's out there? Well, there's a pretty fair amount of retrospective data. At this point, we don't have any prospective data. They're, they're both excellent drugs. And whichever one you go on first, you're probably going to have a pretty good response to. Whichever one you go on second is probably going to be compromised in the response and duration. So there is this concept of cross-resistance, and it definitely exists between these two androgen axis drugs. I think there's a lot of hope that maybe you can inhibit the synthesis and then inhibit the receptor and come out with one plus one is equal to two. Turns out probably not the case. One plus one might equal 1.3. Now, there's a little bit of data that some of the enzalutamide post abby patients can get meaningful responses. Uh, there's a German paper by Schrader and colleagues that showed that you can have good responses to enzalutamide despite queer progression on Abby, even some of those patients that were primary resistant to Abby. When you go the other way, you can definitely have some responses, but it turns out the response rate's probably a little bit lower. So we're now in a very evolutionary phase, again, um, because of all these new advances, and the whole issue of sequencing is a huge issue in medical oncology. You know, what's first, what's second, what's optimal? Do we do ABC or CBA? And the truth is, we have a whole lot more to learn. So. Um